Activision. Hey everyone, Dave here, and today I'm geeking out over the greatest band in Pawnee, Indiana, Scarecrow Boat. Or as they are more frequently known, Mouse Rat. Dave's obsession, Dave's obsession of the moment. Before he was a Star Lord, before he was the special, before he was rumored to be in talks to be an archaeology professor, Chris Pratt was an agent named Macklin. My name is Bert Macklin. I'm with the FBI. Or, more accurately, he was Andy Dwyer, the jerk-ass frat douche and sensitive boyfriend from Season 1 of Parks and Recreation, who fortunately evolved into the lovable schlub from Season 2 and on of Parks and Recreation. Uh, yeah, first rule of writing for Chris Pratt, play to his natural likability. Aww. I do say the cutest stuff. Like News Radio, it's impossible for me to narrow down my one favorite character on Parks and Rec, but Andy is always in the running. Well, after Season 1, he's always in the running. And like many lovably clueless bros on television, he fancies himself quite the musician. I just wrote a new song, okay? Bottom line, it's called Sex Hair. It's about how you can tell when someone's just had sex because of how their hair gets matted up in the back. It's awesome. And he has a band which features himself and other people who sometimes have lines. The most prominent is Burley, who is apparently played by Andrew Berlinson, but you can't fool me, time-traveling young Alan Ruck. But the other members aren't what's important. This is The Andy Show. All of Mouse Rat's songs are a natural extension of Andy Dwyer's personality. Two lines I put into every song I've ever sang, spread your wings and fly, and you deserve to be a champion. They aspire for an upbeat rock and roll energy and are unencumbered by pesky things like logic or sensical lyrics. In my heart, I'm sad you had to die. Lil Horse. Spread your wings and learn to fly. Horses don't fly. That's why I'm telling them, learn to fly. The song that Parks and Rec viewers hear the most is The Pit, an autobiographical song about the time Andy fell into the pit. It's full of raw emotional power with, shall we say, minimalist lyrics. But the emotion seems to get across, and clearly Andy has a deeply personal connection to it. When he hears it in the wild, his first thought is, I love this song, and not, you know, I wrote this song. Mousetrap plays several songs over the course of the series, and on the show itself you only get to hear snippets of most of them. They're all perfectly catchy, and if you didn't know the source, you'd swear they were just some tune you vaguely recognize from some band you vaguely heard of. But then you listen to the actual lyrics, and you realize that they rank up there with the funniest comedy music in your collection. I am assuming that, like all decent people, you have a rather large comedy music collection. Don't lie to me, I know you collect Dr. Demento's basement tapes. 5,000 Candles in the Wind, for instance, is a heartwarming tribute to everyone's favorite miniature horse, Lil Sebastian. Yes, the logic behind the title is amusing. What's 5,000 times better than a candle in the wind? But it's a powerful tune that can move even the hardest heart. Even Ron Swanson himself can't resist this song. <laughs> and yes, it's a song about a tragic loss, but still viewed through Andy's absurdly childlike eyes. The funniest line didn't even make it onto the show itself. But here's the part that hurts the most. Cannot ride a ghost. Then there's the song Andy wrote for his own wedding, which you only really hear the opening chords of in the episode itself. The song is dedicated to the love he and April share, and it's called Two Birds Holding Hands. I'm going to repeat that. Two Birds Holding Hands. That's the kind of blend of vagueness and specificity that I love. It's important to be poetic and have them be birds, but it doesn't matter what kind of birds. You don't need that clear word picture. They're just two birds who have hands, and hold them. And then it doesn't take the lyrics long to ignore the whole bird metaphor, aside from a couple of mentions of flying, and just sort of devolves into a list of things April and Andy could do together. And once again, it's a weirdly specific and yet still arbitrary list. We can go bowling, then hitch a ride out of space. Let's fly to that restaurant Maybe Arby's is the place to be We can go wherever we want Cause it's you and me Two birds holding hands
And then there's my favorite Mouse Rat song, the Nope 2012 campaign theme, Catch Your Dream, featuring Duke Silver. You hear snippets of this song several times during Season 4, and it employs that old familiar cliché of catching one's dream. But if you listen to the rest of the lyrics, it takes the metaphor a little too literally. Gonna bag that beautiful beast and drag it on home. Oh, oh. You can catch the wildest dream you dare. Dab your camo and demo. We love it for bad. You gotta catch your dream. It gets kind of morbid. Cause it's not enough to simply bone thing. You gotta crush it so it. Seriously, they won't leave any survivors. Cause it's not enough to simply catch your dream. You gotta grab your dream and then catch your dream, dream. The songs of Mouse Rat contain some of the funniest writing in a series already overflowing with hilarious writing. Just goes to show you we are truly living in the age of the bonus feature, an era where the supplemental garnishes deserve almost as much care and attention as the main course itself. But it's still most important that the main course is good, so later this month we'll be discussing some of my favorite episodes of this truly delightful series. Until then, this is Dave, signing off. Tangle it to your heart You gotta gut it, stuff it, and mount it to your heart